Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, I think I told you about one of these EAR834 clone preamps that I built. For some reason, one channel is about half of the volume of the other one. And it's really weird. It's not distorted. I mean, it sounds fairly clean. Obviously, it doesn't sound as good as the channel that's full volume. But it's not like all crunchy and doing weird stuff. I mean, it sounds like music. And so, I'm kind of baffled about what's going on. I'm going to dive into diagnosing what's wrong with this thing and what needs to be done to fix it. I'm going to be checking the voltages, doing that sort of thing, see what the difference is, and try to pinpoint where the signal strength is being lost. You know, I could have planned this to try to do some content on diagnosing, but hey, this one just happened. Wasn't happy about it. I had somebody ready to buy this thing, and it's like, I can't sell this thing like this. So let's dive into trying to figure out what's wrong with this thing so somebody can enjoy listening to it. Okay, first thing we're going to do is some voltage tests. So let's turn this thing on, and we have the ground here connected to the ground lug, and then we've got the positive here on the high voltage DC and as you can see, it jumps right up to what we'd expect to see. We'll go ahead and let this settle down a little bit. Shooting up with about 295 volts. I know it says 285 here, but here we go. So these two rails on the edge here are the power going to each of the tubes. And there's three power resistors that go along this edge. So here, we've got our 297. We've got our 297. We'll check on the other side of this resistor. 292. 294. Very similar. Come over here and we check the plate of this triode. 294. Plate of this triode, 293, thereabouts. This is the cathode follower output tube. So then as we come along here, we check on the other side of this next resistor. We got 258, 272, plate of this tube, we're seeing 112. And then the plate on this tube, we're seeing 106. So then we come down here to this next resistor. We've got 203 volts. And then on this channel, whoa, we've got 12 volts. I think we may have found the problem, or at least where the problem is. So again, this channel is. 203 and this channel that was super quiet is only at 12 volts. We come over here and check the plate voltage on this input tube. There's 83 volts and 7 volts. So clearly between this point and this point we're having a huge voltage drop. So either this resistor is bad, we got a bad solder joint, probably the first thing I'm going to do while the board's still in the preamp is reflow this joint on this resistor here and here and see if that changes the voltage readings. So let me do that real quick and we'll come back and remeasure this. Okay, so I went in and reflowed the solder joint on both sides of this resistor and that one and it didn't make any difference. So I pulled the board out, I took one end of each of those resistors loose, measured the resistors, and they both measured 200K. I was pretty sure they did. So now I'm gonna let you look and see if you see what the problem is. 
That's one channel. There's the other one. The bad channel's up on the top. And there's the problem. I soldered that capacitor in backwards. You can see these are all connected to the negative rail. That one is in backwards. The negative's hooked up to the positive side. And the ones on the other channel, I did right. All the ones in the power supply are right. I just got that one capacitor wrong. And there was a big voltage drop. And that's why we were seeing 12 volts down there on that end of the power supply rail. It's probably why we were seeing such a big variance in the voltages from one channel to the other. So, anyway. Got to pull this capacitor out, replace it. And I think we're going to be all good to go. If it was really something disastrous, it would have blown the top out of that capacitor, which it didn't. And so, yeah, the other capacitors are fine. We just got to replace that cap, and the preamp should be good to go. So let me get that cap replaced and put the board back into the chassis. We'll run through all the voltages, and hopefully the channel-to-channel -channel voltage will be similar. And, hey stuff happens so let me get that done get it back in the chassis and let's check the voltages and make sure that we got everything fixed okay well it was definitely an obvious problem we found so let's come in here and check our voltages again got 300 got 296 there 296 280 280 204, 206. Definitely fix the problem. Let's go ahead and run down these plates. Got 86, 81, 124, 120, 296, 296. All that looks lovely. And yeah, that was definitely a bonehead move. I was obviously so focused on checking all those resistor values that I didn't notice that that one cap was in backwards when I soldered it up. But it definitely didn't harm anything. That's a low current part of the amp with a lot of resistance. And if it had been something really nasty, it would have blown the top off the cap being installed backwards, which it didn't. So no harm, no foul, except a little waste of time taking this thing back apart and figuring out what was going on. And I easily could have just not done this video. But, hey, I thought it was worth showing you all that sometimes everybody makes mistakes. And how to diagnose a problem when you've got one and figure out what you did wrong. Because it's very easy to do stuff like this. So anyway, the caps, I went ahead and replaced both of them on the front end. Or this front caps, I didn't have any 400 volt ones in stock. I had some 350 volt ones, which I replaced both of them with, so they'd be symmetrical. But as you can see, we're only seeing 200 volts here, so 350 volt cap, plenty good enough for that position. And all I got left to do now is hook this thing up to my system and let it burn in a little bit and make sure everything else is good to go which i'm sure it will and i'll have another one he's up for sale so anyway i think this is probably a great spot to wrap up this video well i hope you found this video educational it's kind of a learning experience for me too this is the first one of these i've had do this i've had you know one of them had a bad output jack and it was just dead. And that was pretty weird. It took me a little while to figure out what was going on there. But different problem here. Glad we were able to fix it. Now we can put this one up for sale as a nice, ready-to-go EAR-834 clone preamp. I may have mentioned in another video, a customer sent me a smaller footprint board of this same circuit that... I'm going to experiment with and he's actually even working on an even smaller one and I'm hoping that shrinking the footprint of this thing doesn't 
like get the transformer too close to the signal and end up causing problems. I really don't want to get into using toroidal transformers. I know some people love them. I'm just not a huge fan of them. I like, maybe I'm just old school and I like these old EI core ones and I think they look good. I've had people say this is the ugliest preamp they've ever seen. It's like, hey, I guess beauty's in the eye of a beholder. I think it looks cool. But anyway, glad we were able to get this thing fixed. Hope you enjoyed this content. Hopefully that showing you how I went through this will help you diagnose any problems that you might have with some audio gear. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. I want to thank all you Patreon supporters and also you folks that make donations at my website. That's also super helpful to help me keep funding these projects so I can show you fresh content on how to build DIY audio to enjoy on a budget. And until the next video, have a nice day.